Oh my god, why is there blood? Nora inserted a needle into the chest of the man who fell unconscious in the hotel lobby. Everyone started reprimanding Nora when Angela screamed. But suddenly... He's breathing. My husband's breathing. Don't worry, ma'am. I have done a simple procedure on him which should keep him breathing. He will be completely all right as soon as he is taken to the hospital. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You are an angel. Thank you. Angel? What a joke. Ma'am, a simple CPR could have saved him. But you did the CPR and it wasn't working. Well, it will take some time to revive him, won't it? She unnecessarily poked a hole in him, and she is not even a doctor, whereas I'm a senior med student. Though the woman was till then happy about Nora saving her husband, she began to panic, listening to Angela's words. Are you really not a doctor? Does it matter whether I'm a doctor? How preposterous! Of course it does! He didn't need to be operated on. It's all because you pretended to know more than you actually do. Move away, please! Just then, the paramedics arrived. They took one look at the man and were startled. Who performed the first aid on this man? It's her, sir. She is not even a doctor. This is an assault. I say we call the police. There is no need for that. I would say she knew what she was doing. You have done a better job than I would have, miss. Kudos to you. So, my husband will live? That is for the doctors to say. However, I think your husband is out of the woods thanks to this young woman here. The only difference is that we would have performed the procedure in a sterile environment. However, time is crucial in such situations. Oh, thank God. <gasps> How is that even possible? Angela was shell-shocked. The paramedics rolled the patient into the ambulance. The patient's wife turned to thank Nora, but she had already slipped away. Meanwhile, Justin and Lawrence made it downstairs. Sir, I spoke to the staff. The man who fainted was Mr. Simon Anderson. What? Is he alright, Lawrence? Yes, sir. The paramedics just took him. Apparently, a woman performed emergency first aid on him, so he's fine. That's a relief. Let's go to the hospital right now. The Hunts and the Andersons were family friends, so Justin had to make sure that Simon was all right. When he arrived at the hospital, he couldn't meet Simon as he was resting, but he met his wife. Melissa, I just heard. I'm so sorry. Thank you, Justin. You're kind to visit. How is Simon doing? He's still weak. The doctors have kept him here for observation, but they're optimistic. I'm glad. What are you doing here? And why didn't you reach out? Oh, it was all hasty, Justin. We heard that Simon's sister was here. When we came down, we learned that she, um, had died 23 years ago. Simon didn't take it well, as you can see. I see. Let me know if you need anything. Yes, I will. Justin, it was a young woman who saved Simon at the hospital. It would be great if you could get me her contact information. I would like to thank her. I think Lawrence will be able to help. Won't you, Lawrence? With pleasure, sir. Justin reassured Melissa Anderson and left for the hotel. As they reached there, they stopped to speak with the receptionist. I need to know who rescued Mr. Anderson. I don't know, sir. What do you mean you don't know? Isn't this your job to know? Sir, it was utter chaos here, so I couldn't notice who she was. <laughs> you mean you didn't. Let it go, Lawrence. Just find the person from today's CCTV footage. Mr. Hunt, I would like to let you know that Mr. Howard Hunt has arrived and is at your suite. What? When? Just a while ago. Why did you let him up? Sir, they insisted. My hands were tied. Justin and Lawrence hustled up to the top floor. Meanwhile, Howard Hunt, an obnoxious cousin of Justin Hunt, was waiting at the suite, shooting daggers at Pete, while Chester was guarding Pete. Why have you come here, Howard? Justin is not going to be happy. Don't you know what is happening in the family because of this dimwit of a son he brought into the family? It is not Pete's fault, and I advise you not to speak of him like that. Or what? Justin will not spare you. <laughs> I'm not scared of Justin. You should be, Howard. If I were you, I would listen to Chester and get the hell out of here. Justin's cold voice sent a shock down Howard's spine. Justin, you are back. Thank God. Who said you could come here, Howard? I am not here to fight with you, believe me. I came here on Grandpa's orders. He asked me to bring you to the family home so that we can discuss how Pete should be punished. Why should he be punished? Don't play dumb, Justin. He pushed Grandma down the stairs. I have said it a million times and I will say it again. Pete didn't do it. We have a CCTV recording of him pushing her down. Cameras don't lie, Justin. But they can be manipulated. What about Grandma then? She is paying the price for what your son did. He didn't do it. And I've told you all that I will bring Dr. Athena to treat Grandma. 
Nobody knows where Dr. Athena is. I will find her and drag her with my own hands if I have to. Once Grandma is awake, she will tell us the truth. For now, leave us alone. Grandma Hunt was in the hospital with a head injury. The family was convinced that Pete pushed her, but he didn't. This is precisely why Justin was looking for Dr. Athena, to clear Pete's name. Once Howard left, Pete went to his room and called Cherry and narrated the drama that had ensued. So Daddy is looking for Dr. Athena? Yes, poor Daddy is trying his best to find her to clear me of the blame. Pete, I'm going to tell you a secret. Promise you won't tell anyone. What is it? Mommy is Dr. Athena. Pete's eyes widened in shock and he also felt relieved. Really? Then she will be able to help us, won't she? Yes, but we can't reveal this to anyone. So how will we get her to help? That's easy, leave that to me. Pete explained his plan to Cherry. He was going to send another email from Justin's laptop. Huh? An anonymous email again? Is Justin behind this? Who cares about that if I can find my son? Should I just agree to it? How will I do it without compromising my identity? Nora thought about it a lot and decided to help Justin. Finding her son was the uppermost priority for her. So, she made her way upstairs to Justin's suite. Meanwhile, Lawrence was battling with a member of the hotel's tech team on the phone. The CCTV has been hacked. How did this happen? So you're telling me you can't restore this morning's footage? Oh, all right. I will let Mr. Hunt know. I assure you, he won't be happy. <clears throat> Are you lost, Miss Smith? I want to meet Mr. Hunt. I'm sorry, Miss Smith. Mr. Hunt is busy right now, and he won't have any visitors. All right, then. Can you give him a message? Yes. Tell Mr. Hunt that I can treat his grandmother if he'd like me to. With that, Nora walked away, leaving Lawrence confused. Treat Mrs. Hunt? What is this woman getting at? She hasn't even gone to college. The next day, Nora went to the hospital to see her Aunt Irene, while Justin, accompanied by Lawrence, was there to meet Simon. Were you able to find that woman? I'm afraid not, Mrs. Anderson. That's too bad. Wait, that's her! What? Are you sure? Justin and Lawrence turned to see who Melissa was pointing at. Their jaws dropped to the floor when they found that it was Nora. Was it finally time that Dr. Athena came out of her hiding? To find out what happens next, don't let your excitement die! The full audio series is on the Pocket FM app. Tap the link in the description to install now.